Each time I drink from you, it almost takes my heart. Cause I am so afraid the crazy nights will start. Each night I ask the stars above, why must I feed on teenagers on drugs? Some nights they taste so crappy. I feed on teenagers and drugs I turn in fear away from you Cause I'll be the loony one If I should break from you If you want to make me die Well that won't be so hard to do Just keep on getting high And I On drugs. I turn in fear away from you Cause I'll be the wacky one if I should drink from you If you want to make me die, well that won't be so hard to do Just keep on getting high and I will be totally scrubbed Each night I ask the stars I feed on teenagers and drugs. Thanks a lot, Justin. I hope you know what you've done to me, you sad little political man. It's a brand new day here at night. Ram da ram tam da ram tam da da In the white room with black curtains I play PlayStation Ram tam da ram tam da da I awake in this place Cause my clock is fell from that It's a camera! Who said that? What? Oh, hi! Welcome to Night Danger, I think. Sorry, I'm a bit confused tonight. I don't know my ass from an apple cart. I made the mistake of drinking blood from a teenager earlier, and now I feel kind of weird. She must have been doing some strange stuff. Her blood tasted like patchouli, and she was wearing all these love beads. Ugh, I can't get the sight of her floral print out of my mind's eye. It's just staring at me. Whoa, that can't be good. What did I do to deserve this insufferable maldiction? Oh yeah, all that murdering and evil. She was very annoying, so naturally I killed her, like you do. But when I looked at her little glass TV thingy, she had this movie on it. I was like, hey, I know that movie. It's the one about the teenaged alien boy named Derek, who falls in love with an Earth girl. And his race came to Earth in order to grow lobsters in a cave so their people wouldn't starve, and they go around zapping people with their focusing disintegrator ray. 
His what? His focusing disintegrate array. And the lobsters can grow to the size of buildings, and everyone's shirt has a giant V on it, and it's all because everyone's hungry for lobster, and they call them gargons for some reason. I think I'm losing my marbles. No, you're not! I swear this all makes sense if you just watch the movie. Are we doing the flashlight thingy? It's time for you Flynn Mike Flash Night Cleek! Oh god, I'm blind! Now I'll never find out why a grown man playing a teenage alien is called Derek. And why all the aliens speak American English. And why his rival is called Thor. But truly aside, it's a legitimate question. I think the hippie blood is starting to wear off. Are we doing this thing? Yes! Okay. This classic piece of sci-fi nostalgia was the brainchild of Tom Grafe, who wrote, directed, produced, edited, did cinematography, special effects, and music coordination for the film, in addition to playing the role of the reporter. Wow, we get it. You're independent and hardworking, Tom. And talk about the money saver, this movie was made for next to nothing, even by 50 standards, because most of the actors in the film were also financial backers. But the real stars of the show are David Love and Don Bender, in the roles of Derek the Teenaged Alien and Betty the Earth Girl, whose interplanetary romance will have you glancing up at the stars, wondering when your intergalactic Superman is set to beam down and sweep you off your feet. So what if his space boots are just dress shoes with white socks pulled over them? And check out his sweet masking tape flight suit. They must be a very advanced yet frugal race of aliens. My guess is he's taking you out for a plate of steamed lobster, I mean gargan, for your first date. And ladies, don't be scared of that focusing disintegrator ray. It's actually just a painted Hubley's brand toy ray gun that kids used to buy at the dime store back when kids still went outside and used their imaginations. But my true favorite has to be the medical skeleton that's used for every single human corpse in the movie, complete with clearly visible hinged metallic joints. Thank you, Tom, for making this movie. I know I'm a better demon for having seen it. So join me in watching those thrill crazy space kids blasting the flesh off humans. <laughs> who I can only assume are piling all of those skeletons into the spacious trunks of their father's massive 1950s Cadillacs. From 1959 comes those teenage hoodlums from another world on the horrendous Reagan Rampage. It's teenagers from outer space. You know I gave Dawn Bender my number. She never called me. Love those bangs though. Dr. Mason? Dr. Mason? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I guess it was nothing. A sudden light reflection. It startled me. There's no doubt a comet or a meteor. No. It, it seemed to be a, a drill-shaped thing. Revolving. No, it, it must have been my imagination. It makes me realize how desperately alone the Earth is. Hanging in space like a speck of food floating in the ocean. Sooner or later to be swallowed up by some creature floating by. Oh, come now. Time will tell, Dr. Mason. We can only wait and wonder. Wonder how. Wonder when.
report preliminary findings. Thor reporting. 42 saturation degrees and 96 volumes. Intermediate fluctuation in Marfan content. Derek reporting. Tridex mixer components ratio exceeding 7 to 1.4. Moore reporting. Diagonal adjustment reading resisting structural forms by 2.8.0 vernums. Saw reporting. Uneven cartoid levels intersect planes below 0.03. Surface readings register above minimum requirements. Morrow, go below and bring up the young Gargan specimen. Now the decision depends on its reactions. Wait, Captain. I have found evidence of intelligent beings on this planet. Of what concern are foreign beings? Of none to you, Thor. Just as you were so unconcerned when you destroyed the small creature. So bravely. It was no more than an insect. But it had life. And that life you had to take to satisfy your endless hunger for killing. Silence, both of you. Proceed, bring the Gargan. That will not be necessary, Captain. Conditions here will be reported as unsatisfactory as they were on the other planets we have charted. By what authority? You will prepare for takeoff. The ship will leave this planet immediately. According to our code of operations... You may forget the code of operations, Captain. Only civilized beings could have made the inscription on this metal piece. We shall not have the thousands of Gargans brought here to destroy them. You have concern for foreign beings over our mission to locate grazing land for our Gargan herds? Recall, it is necessary as a reserve food supply for our people. Our people? We live like parts of a machine. We don't know our fathers or mothers were raised in cubicles. The sick and the old are put to death. It is the one and only way to maintain the supreme race. Have you forgotten? It? Our people have forgotten. They have been made to forget for centuries. But I have learned how it once was. Families, brothers and sisters. There was happiness. There was love. Of what do you speak? From where have you learned such things? I have read. I have read from this book. I discovered it and kept it hidden. Somehow it survived the flames of the Annihilators when our people were turned into mechanized slaves centuries ago. When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture and death for this treason. The High Court may judge me after we have accomplished our mission will find an uninhabited planet to which the herds of Gargans may be shipped without endangering civilized beings. Let me see that book. I am interested to see what sways your mind so heavily. You may have it. <laughs> Bring up the Gargan. You were a fool, Derek. This book has poisoned your mind, and you shall suffer for it. Captain, if the Gargans are shipped here, the inhabitants may destroy them. That possibility alone makes it worthwhile to locate an uninhabited planet. That book has indeed made you forget many things. We are the supreme race. We have the supreme weapons. Keep him under guard, Thor. I will study the reactions of the young Gargan. Before the High Court has you executed, you should be made to watch what happens when we return here with the Gargans. By the elements alone, they will grow to millions of times their original size in less time than it takes for the sun to rise and fall. It thrives, Captain. Already I can feel it has grown heavier. We shall return to our base and lead the transport ships here. Soon, this planet will be covered with full-grown Gargans. A safe distance from our planet, yet their meat will be available to us for the harvesting. Repack the instruments. I shall radio back the news of our success. Captain! Captain, something has gone wrong. 
Look here. What? What has happened? I do not know. It suddenly fell limp and now does not move. Assemble the T-Rex. It's hooking the gas grating instruments. Be quick! The atmosphere here tested above minimum, but the Gargan species cannot live due to excessive nitrogenic gas compounds emitted in our preliminary diagnosis. Then this planet will be reported as unsuitable? Repack the instruments and prepare for takeoff. We will continue our search in another solar system. And when we return to our home base, you will be presented to the High Court with the evidence against you. Thor, Sol, find the prisoner and prepare him for the isolation chamber. I will make contact with base. Expedition Z06 to base. Expedition Z06 to base. Guard him. I will get the straps. Lie down. Put your hands behind you. He escaped from Saul. I could have stopped him. Derek is to be brought back alive. He is the son of our leader. Derek? I reported his actions and was connected with the leader himself. He told me this. He said Derek does not know. As the son of our leader, the High Court will pardon him. He will be pardoned. When the sky is light, we will begin to search for him. Captain, look at this. The Gargan. It is not dead. It has revived. It flourishes. The excessive nitrogenic gas compound shocked its system. Now it thrives on the very same compounds. Then this planet is suitable. Completely. I must resume radio vision contact. Morrow, Saul, secure the Gargan by expandable leg bands. Out of sight in that cave. The size it attains by the time we return will give us an exact growth rate to expect of the herds. At the rate the Gargon is expected to grow, what will prevent it from tearing loose the leg bands and escaping from the cave? We shall be back before that happens, unless it should receive food in excess of the atmospheric elements. We will leave nothing else for it to consume. Imagine thousands of beasts like that. Millions of times enlarged, roaming over this planet. They will be harvested from the air, so there will be no danger to us. Let us be quick. I do not like to look upon it. Now that you report the planet is suitable for our purposes, you are to return here immediately and prepare to lead the transport ships there. Derek's escape could now mean difficulty in our operation should he communicate in any way with the inhabitants, inferior though they may be. If we are to return now, how can he be stopped? Leave your best man to find Derek and inform him he is my son. I will join you on the return trip to meet him there. He may be stubborn. He has already threatened our lives. If that becomes the case, he... he must be destroyed. And any beings with whom he might communicate, they must be destroyed. Your orders are complete. 
I shall send my best man. I heard the orders, Captain. Let me find Derek. You will wait until the sky is light enough to begin the search. We will leave now and return here to meet you when we bring the Gargans. Do not fail, Thor. I shall not fail. Yes, I would. Would you tell me the meaning of the inscription on this metal piece? Sparky, 1243 Willowcrest Drive. That's just three blocks down there and a few doors up. You can't miss it. Hey, what's what you're doing now? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just trying to make out what kind of clothes that guy was wearing. Looks like some kind of military uniform. Wonder where he's from. Could be from Mars, for all I care. Hurry up that boy, will ya? I haven't got all day. Hop in, I'll give you a lift. Lift? Well, it's a long way into town. Okay, it's all right with me. Wait. Never saw a uniform like that before. What brings you here? I am searching for someone. Maybe I can help you. you know a lot of folks around these parts. I am searching for someone you could not know. I put Sparky's breakfast out 20 minutes ago, Grandpa, and it's still here. He's probably still out chasing gophers. Hello. You've come to see our room for rent? What's that? A fellow to see the room for rent, Grandpa. You show it to him, will you? Joe will be by for me in a minute. We're going swimming at Alice's and I haven't even changed yet. Well, come on in. I'm Betty Morgan, and this is my grandfather. Well, how do you do, son? Uh, just arrived in town? Don't believe I've seen you around before. I just arrived. And your name? Derek. Derek. The empty room belonged to my brother, Bud. He's married now and lives upstate. Your brother? You knew your brother? Did I know my brother? That's a strange question to ask. Grandpa raised us both since we were kids after Mom and Dad died. I am sorry. I. It's just that I never knew any brothers or sisters. <laughs> Your mother and father decided to play it smart and avoid a lot of squabbles around the house. Oh, Grandpa. <laughs> I never knew my mother or father. Well, let's take a look at the room, and if you like it, you're welcome to stay. It's this way. I'll show it to you. Hey, I thought you were getting ready to go swimming. No, that can wait. Right in here, Derek. I hope you like the view. There's plenty of windows. <laughs> What's the matter? You act like you've never seen the inside of an automobile before. What is this? The gear shift. Where have you been all your life? 
the gear shift. Tell me what it is for. Now look, mister, I didn't offer you a ride to give no driving lesson. Tell me! Sure, sure. I didn't mean anything. Here's the clutch. When I push it in, I change gears. Low, second, and high. And to halt the vehicle? When I want to stop, I press the brake. Right here. And this? The starter and ignition switch. And the fuel, what does it use? Are you kidding? Gasoline, of course. Here's the gas pedal right here. Hmm, it's about time I have the tank fill. I asked him where he was from, Grandpa, and he just said he was from very far away. He did, huh? Well, maybe he doesn't like to talk about where he's from. With the looks of his outfit, I'd say he's raised in a private school of some sort. Well, Grandpa, if he just got into town and can't pay the rent until he gets a job or something, would... Well, what do you say, young man? What do you think of the room? You will let me live here with you? Well, sure. That's why we have the sign-up. That's why you came here, wasn't it? Not exactly, I... Derek, I was just talking to Grandpa, and... Well, if you don't have the rent money right away, that could wait until he gets a job, couldn't it, Grandpa? Mm, why, sure. That's all right with me, Betty. But then, if he doesn't like the room... I like it here very much. I would like to stay. Fine. I'll go out and take down the sign. Uh, you can use the phone to have your bags brought over. My bags? I have nothing else. No other clothes or anything? We were not allowed to. I mean, my uniform is all I have. Gosh, you've got to have more than that. Bud left some of his clothes in the closet, Grandpa. Couldn't Derek use some of them? Of course, my dear. Bud wouldn't mind a bit, I'm sure. Oh, golly, that's Joe. Put on whatever you like from the closet, Derek. I'll be right back. Make yourself at home. Hi there, Joe. Hi, Gramps. Betty, I'm afraid I can't make the swimming date. Not till later, anyway. Got a sudden assignment for the paper. Oh, gosh, what now, Joe? I have a list of folks to interview. Say they saw a new flying saucer last night. That sounds like it might take you all day. I hope not. I'll call you as soon as I get through, okay? Okay, Joe. I guess a reporter's life can be pretty hectic. You never know when a new story will break. I was just thinking. Maybe Derek would like to go swimming, if you let us borrow the car. Betty would at that, uh, if you don't think Alice would mind. <laughs> you don't know Alice. I won't be able to keep him apart. What's going on in town anyway, mister? A convention or something? What? Well, those clothes you're wearing. I talked to a guy this morning who was wearing the same kind of outfit. Maybe the guy you're looking for, huh? You spoke to him? What did he tell you? Where did he go? Hey, what's the matter with you? Hey, take your hands off me. You will tell me what he said to you. Oh, why should I? Hey, who do you think you are anyway? Answer me or I destroy you. He came in with a dog tag. Wanted to know about the address and I told him how to find it. Where? Where did you send him? It was an address on Willow Crest Drive. 1243, I think. Tell me how to get there. Just drive down there about three blocks. That's, that's Willow Crest. 1243, it's only a few doors up. <laughs> Break on so hard, Derek. That is, unless you want us to go through the windshield every time. I have never piloted a vehicle like this before. I will try again. Uh, this time, pull in there. That's Alice's house. Oh, much better. Wait, Betty. Yes, Derek? What is it? When I came to your place, it was because of... Yes? 
I had just arrived here. I, I did not know where else to go, but everything was so strange to me. I... I'm glad you came. So is Grandpa. Without any family or friends, you wouldn't like it at a hotel or any place like that. Come on. I hope Alice can dig up some swim trunks for you. Who's the stranger? Uh, Joe couldn't make it, Alice. I talked Derek into coming along. Uh, Derek, this is Alice. Derek? Hey, I like that. Come on in. The water's fine. Well, we need a pair of swim trunks. I couldn't find any at my house. No problem at all. He can wear a pair of my father's. The folks are gone today, and so are the servants. We have the whole place to ourselves. Uh, where are the trunks? Hanging up right over there. They look a little large for you, Derek. Well, maybe you better put them on with some clothespins, too, just in case. I guess it's safe to try them on anyway. Over there at the bathhouse. What was that? Don't worry, I'll get it. That is what I wanted to tell you about. The reason I came to your place when I did not know where else to go. Heck, I thought it was a 50 cent piece at least. That looks like who it is. It's Sparky's. Sparky's dog tag. Oh, where on earth did you find it? When I first arrived, I was with some others. One of them destroyed a small creature. Later, I found that among the remains. You mean somebody killed Sparky? Oh, no, Derek, it can't be true. Why would anyone want to kill Sparky? Betty, I'm sorry. Tell me who did it, Derek. They are gone now. Only I remained. But I don't understand. Where is Bart? Will you take me to where it happened? I'll get dressed and come with you. No, Alice, please. You stay here. We'll see you later. So Derek didn't come into town alone. If you're looking for him, he isn't here now. He and Betty, uh, that's my granddaughter, they went over to the Woodwards. Why don't you go on over there? No doubt they'd be glad to have you joined in the fun. Yes. How do I go there? The Woodwards are straight on down the street, about three miles, just before you get to the park. Got the biggest house in the block down there. You can't miss it. Where are you fellas from, anyway? Don't believe I've seen uniforms like yours before. Hmm, military secret, eh? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Derek didn't say where he's from either. Don't let me keep you. You're probably anxious to see him. Those old bones. You can see they've been here for a very long time. No. It was among these remains that I found the metal inscription. But this couldn't be Sparky. I know. He must have been here and his collar tag fell off. That's all. You are not familiar with the focusing disintegrator ray? The what? It projects an isolated beam which separates the molecules of living material in chain reaction. All but the solids, the skeletal braces. Horrible. And you mean Sparky? But... Over there is what happened when the same beam was aimed at me. It missed and that is what is left. Good heavens, Derek. You've got to explain it to me. Why were they doing this? 
where were they from? How, how did you? We... Betty, tell me. What is the most advanced form of transportation that you know? What do you mean? What's that got to do with it? Please, tell me, Betty. Well, airplanes. Jet airplanes, I guess. Why? And where do they go? From where to where? To anywhere in the world. And that's all? Where else is there to go? I should not have brought you here. Is it about a new secret weapon? Something you and the others invented and then they turned against you? It, it is something like that. I guess I should try to find someone I can explain it to. Maybe Professor Simpson at the college. He's head of the science department. He will... What is it, Derek? Betty, when you learn where I'm from, well, you may not understand, but I hope it will not make any difference between us, because... I don't care where you're from. I don't understand all this, but somehow I feel that I've always known you. That we've never been apart. I... Let us go to the professor you speak of. We have to pass the house first so I can change. What was that? Did you hear a sound? No. Only the wind. What sort of sound? Nothing. My imagination alarmed me. Come, let us be on our way. Well, hello. What can I do for you? You are alone? Could be. Where are the others? The ones who are with you? Why do you want to know that? Tell me where they are. Say, who are you anyway? Never mind. Just tell me. Well, they left here. They're gone. Where did they go? I think you better get out of here before I call the police. You will call no one. You will do as I say. That's what you think, mister. I said you will call no one. <laughs> so I left a note so I'll know where we went. If I know Grandpa, we'll be back before he even wakes up. Uh, hello. Hello, Gramps. This is Joe. Betty there? No, so she and Derek went out over to the Woodward's pool. Uh, you could probably reach her over there. Derek? Who's Derek? Oh, you haven't met him yet, have you? Uh, he rented Bud's old room this morning. Seems like a nice fellow. Oh? Well, the reason I called, I wanted to tell Betty I stumbled onto a double murder story that may keep me longer, but... Well, after I get the story into the paper, I'll, I'll go on over to Alice's and see her there. A double murder, Joe? When was it? Where? We're not sure yet, Gramps. There's only a couple of skeletons. We'll know more when the coroner gets here. We're going to get busy now, Gramps. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Joe! Joe, I just found a note. Joe! Hello, hello. My golly, you missed them at the pool, huh? Sure am sorry. Uh, Betty left me a note. Now they've gone over to the college to see Professor Simpson.
find Professor Simpson? This is his office, but he hasn't come in yet. Well, let's wait for him at the faculty parking lot. It's just around the building. You may wait here if you like. No, thank you. We'll wait outside. Good morning, Hilda. Oh, good morning, Professor Simpson. Have the aptitude questionnaires come in? They're probably still in mimeographing. I'll go down and see if they're ready. Uh, that's Professor Simpson's office. The third door down. Uh, he's head of the science department. Well, that looks like Professor Simpson's car right there. He must be somewhere else on campus. We better go back to his office and wait. Hello? This is Simpson, science department. I put that down. What is the meaning of this? Do as I say. Who are you? Where is he? The one who came with information for you. Who? You are making some mistake. I am making no mistake. Where did he go? Out there? I don't know what you're talking about. You will speak to no one else. after you left. Ah! Oh! oh, Derek. Oh, it's some kind of foolish joke. I'm not going to keep a job where this sort of thing goes on. I want to believe what I'm thinking isn't true, but... It was a focusing disintegrator. Then whoever killed Sparky... But you said they'd gone. For some reason, they want to stop me. Somehow, we were traced here. I want you to get in your vehicle and go to a place where you will be safe. But how could they... Grandpa. I left a note for Grandpa. They must have... Oh, Derek. I will go to your place. No, they may be waiting for you there. I can call Grandpa. Hello. Oh, Grandpa, thank heaven. Derek, he's all right. Betty, what is it, child? What's the matter? Grandpa, was somebody there? Somebody you told we were at the college? Oh, yes, a friend of Derek's. Uh, did he find you okay? He's a murderer. He killed Professor Simpson, Grandpa. He's after Derek, and he's probably on the way back to the house right now. A murderer? But uh, are the police... Don't argue, Grandpa. Just get out of there. We're going to the City Hall Police Station right now. Meet us there. Don't worry about me, Betty. I'll leave right away. Goodbye, honey. I better call the police and let them know we're coming. With what weapons are they equipped? Well, guns. Why? Guns that emit what? Bullets. What do you mean? Bullets. A centuries old invention against... Hello, operator. Give me the police department. Hurry. <laughs> Betty, tell me how to go there. I want you to go somewhere else where you will be safe. We're safer than the city hall. The police said they're going to have armed guards waiting for us on the front steps. I told them we'd be right there. Let's hurry. My granddaughter, you're not getting any help from me. Did they return here? Tell me. 
I have no reason to harm your granddaughter. But if you do not tell me, I... You can kill Derek? Why should you care about him? Why shouldn't I? Why do you want to kill him? I... It is important only that he leave here, that I return him to where he belongs. And where is that? From where he escaped. I need not harm anyone if you tell me where he is. If you do not, there will be many deaths. Beginning with you, now. He's not here, he's... in the center of the city. Where? Take me there. You will pilot the vehicle. Go. Be swift. Alice? Betty? Anybody here? Holy mackerel. You think the tip might have been a phony, Mac? Don't think so, Harry. The girl who called seemed to know what she was talking about. Another call, Mac. Joe Rogers, reporter on the Daily News. He's on the way over. Found another skeleton. Only this time at the bottom of a swimming pool. The city hall is just up ahead of the next block. Oh, I hope Grandpa's there waiting for us safe and sound. What are you doing? Be silent. Continue ahead. You stay here in the car. You'll be safe. He's after me, not you. Must have slipped off that way. Come on. Stay under cover. Betty, thank the Lord you're safe. I just came from Alice's. There was a skeleton in the pool. I... Alice? Oh, no. We came to meet Grandpa. The murderer came in the car with him. What? But how did you get mixed up in this. Since he killed Sparky out by the old mine, he's an insane killer, Joe. And he forced Gramps to drive here? Where is Gramps? Is he okay? Yes, he's... Well, there he is, trying to get across the street. You stay put. I'll go over and help him across. down here. Go into the building. That is the safest place. Look. Here on the sidewalk, drops of blood. Betty, go into the building. Derek. <gasps> Give me the weapon you have, Derek. Slowly. One sudden move and I slay you both. Derek? Will Derek do as he says? Get in! You will take me to a man of surgery to remove the metal pellets from my flesh. That is not possible. Yes, we must. We must do as he says. I know a doctor's office. We'll take him there. She is very wise. Now go! That's 
the way it happened. Next thing I knew, he was trying to fire out the window at Betty and Derek. I swerved the car and... See, where is Betty? That's funny. She must be around someplace. But the car's gone. They must have left without me. Well, don't worry, Gramps. You'll get an escort home. I'm going to phone the story into the paper and then drive out to the old mine Betty mentioned. The old mine? What's out there? I don't know. That's where she said Sparky was killed by the guy. Sparky, our dog? She didn't tell me about that. Hey, Mac, over here. Blood spots on the sidewalk. And where's that car that was parked here? That's it. That's how the killer got away. In our car? Then Betty and Derek, they must have been kidnapped. You've got to do something. You've got to find them. This is it, Derek. That's Dr. Brandt there. He looks like he's leaving. Stop him. Block his path. Is there some emergency? I have a house call to make. Office hours don't begin for another hour. Go inside, all of you. I say, what is this? He's holding a gun on us, Dr. Brandt. We had to bring him here. He wants bullets removed. I see. I'm afraid I cannot be of any help. You will need hospital facilities for anything else. Be silent and get inside. You will remove the pellets here. Now. Leave these people alone, Thor. Where is our ship? I will take you there. No, it is gone. Do as I say. Derek, please. Doctor, you must try. To lie down here. I will prepare an anesthetic. The pain will be great. I will not be drugged. You will simply remove the pellets. Both of you, sit there. I shall keep you covered. Take heed. One treacherous move and they pay with their lives. Now proceed. why you have been searching for me. It must have been important for you to have... The Gargan had to be raised here. You could not be allowed to run free. But the specimen reaction was negative. It was verified positive after you escaped. The captain should have let me kill you when I had a chance. And why didn't he? I saw him stop you when you fired at me. Because... Because he just learned that... You are the son of our leader. to be killed. Why did you fire at me in the city? Your life or death was put in my hands. A traitor does not deserve to be our next leader. The only reason you do not fire now is to force attention to your wounds. When that is done... Proceed! Antiseptic must be applied to your wounds, and you will need bandages. I'll get them. Come back! My 
I'll, I'll find you. You you cannot get away. Oh, I was terrified he'd see us before we got out of there. He may yet. Get in. I will take you back to the police. In his present condition, he cannot remain conscious long. By the time we return with the police, he should be completely helpless. Derek, what was he talking about? The, the Gargon to be raised here and, and you, the son of the leader. You said you didn't know your father. I did not know of the things he said. I thought they'd gone. I wanted to forget them forever. But now I know. They plan to return. Hey, wait a minute. I'm going with you. Where? To the old mine shaft. How did you hear about that? The old fellow inside. He's been telling us everything he can think of. Mentioned that's where you were going. Okay, hop in. Maybe something will turn up out there. <laughs> Uh, you're in here? I know you are. I'll find you. My nurse, Miss Moss, she'll be arriving for office hours. I can hear you. I can hear you breathing. You, you cannot escape me. I'll find you. I'll find you. I'll find you. I'll find you. left? Heavens, I've reached you. This is Dr. Brandt. Where are you, Doctor? There's an emergency patient here. I've done all I can. For... Listen, Miss Moss. He's a murderer. He held hostages at gunpoint to force me to remove bullets. We were fortunate in escaping. You must get out of there. A murderer? We're sending the police, but if you treated him, he could revive at any moment. Y y yes, Doctor. Uh, I'll leave immediately. You will come with me. Put that down. Miss Moss, Miss Moss, what is it? Drop it, I said. What do you want? You will help me to escape. Go out! That vehicle. Is that how you arrived? Yes, that's my car. Get in. You will take me where I say. If you disobey, you will be killed! The police are on the way, Dr. Brand. They... It's no use. I was too late. They're gone. Thor has escaped? But how could he? You said he would be helpless at... Without aid. But my nurse, she didn't know. She bandaged him. Gave him an injection. He revived. Oh, no. We've got to tell the police. They might be able to do something. I'll tell them. 
I'll tell them what happened. Don't worry, Derek. Thor will be caught. They're sure to find him eventually. It is what I know is coming here. The Gargan. They are small when young, but they can attain the, the size of this building in no more than a day. But can't you stop them? The only chance is to duplicate the operation of the disintegrator. How can that be done? The men of science here might be able to do it if they could get Thor's as a model. If only there is enough time. You know, I don't get this guy. Animals are humans. He just seems to like killing. There's more to it than that, Joe. There's something behind this, something we don't understand. The weapon he uses, it's unheard of. Blasting flesh right off the bones. Look at that tree over there. Used it for target practice by the looks of it. I don't know. Let's take a look in the old cave. going. You've got to tell me. It is not far now. You can't escape. The police will find you. Possibly they will. But barricaded in the mouth of a cave with you as hostage and me with this. How long do you think you can hold out that way? Long enough. There will not be too long to wait. Bring your flash bulbs up there. This tunnel is black as pitch. Okay, I'll be right up. You do not value your life. He's getting away. Follow him. No. Dare refuse. You hurt badly? I don't think so. Just bruised. Oh, thank heavens it's over. It was like a nightmare. I, I wish it was over. What do you mean? Back in the cave where he shot at me. Some kind of man-eating monster. Poor Mac, the guy I was with. I could hear the thing tearing him apart. He was dead in a few seconds. Oh, how horrible. What could it have been? I don't know. But whatever it is, I'm afraid the nightmare has just begun. The man guilty of these strange killings now lies mute in confinement at General Hospital, where he is being treated for minor injuries. Authorities plan to transfer him to city jail tonight. The fantastic murder weapon he used has not been located. Mystery still surrounds the disappearance of a man-eating beast said to have been in an abandoned mine shaft outside the city limits. These newsreel shots were made immediately after the city police surrounded the cave and found it completely empty. 
Evidence in the cave appeared to confirm the report that a monster of some sort had been shackled there, but had somehow attained strength enough to pull itself loose and escape. Groups of armed volunteers have set out in search of the creature, hoping to track it down and destroy it. Meanwhile, Thor crashed just below here. If that disintegrator is down there, I'm going to find it. Derek, I just thought. The monster that escaped from the cave. It must have been there at the same time we were. What I can't figure out is... Why did it escape when it did? Why not sooner? It would not have been large enough, but the man it consumed increased its growth rate. Then... How big would it be now? There is no telling. You stay here. Keep the door closed. Go back, it's too dangerous for you We can you find two. that thing twice as fast if we both look. You make me angry. But I like you very much. In a moment, the moon will come from behind a cloud. It'll be easier to see what we're looking for. Yes. The light from your moon, it will help. My moon? Where are you from, Derek? I think I know. I think I've known for some time. You're not from this world, are you? I did not know how to tell you. It seems impossible to believe. You're so much like us. Brother, Grandpa, when he was young. And to think. We were made the same. The only difference is that we were put on places far, far apart. What is it like where you're from? Babies are bred and raised like livestock, parented by the most perfect specimens of our race. If you become ill, you are put to death, as are the old. You won't be going back ever, will you? I shall make the earth my home, and I shall never, never leave it. come from behind the cloud. Derek. The cricket. It's so quiet. The garden, get back! There it is, Derek! It was under the rock! Quick! Shoot it, Derek! Shoot it! It won't work! Run! Go start the motor! Hurry! Why wouldn't the gun work? 
damage somehow when Thor was thrown in the crash. You said that that thing would keep growing. If it does, what can stop it from wrecking the city? And I may be able to repair the damaged part of the disintegrator. If I can, we will stop the Gargan and give the Earth a weapon against invasion as well. If only I can get it to work. Only a coyote. There it is! Grandpa was so exhausted he fell sound asleep with all his clothes on. Do you think you can fix it, Derry? I have found the damaged part. Such a little thing. And yet it has the power to destroy as it does. It is worthless, unless I can figure out an energy substitute. Maybe it won't come into the city, Derek. It will come to the city for more food, if nothing else. in the station 86, out by the hills, due northeast. There's some kind of a monster. It suddenly bobbed up and seemed to touch the sky. I have not been drinking. No, I can't see it now. It must be behind the hills, but I'm getting out of here. The few remaining survivors of the search party that was attacked report that the beast they encountered was many times the size they expected, indicating that the monster has some strange power of rapid growth. An exact description was we have a bulletin just received. According to a report not yet confirmed, a beast of seemingly gigantic proportions has been sighted lurking in the hills due northeast of town. City officials have called for military help. Planes and troops are expected to arrive within the next two hours. Meanwhile, citizens should take refuge in places of safety. Cellars, bomb shelters, as directed by civil defense administrators. I repeat. Derek, they say it's coming. It has grown. It's just northeast of town. I'd better wake up Grandpa. We'll all go down to the cellar. You go there with him. There is a chance I can do something yet. What? What are you looking at? Those wires. Going from pole to pole. They carry the source of energy used for illumination and power in the homes. Yes, electricity. And the wires are spread throughout the city, are they not? You mean you might be able to make the disintegrator work by hooking it to... Possibly. If the power were great enough, the only chance, so I've got to try it. I can help, Derek. I'm going with you. Oh, uh, what's going on? Uh, what's all the commotion about? Grandpa, Derek and I are going out to the edge of town. Wait for us here. First, I must put the disintegrator back together, and then find proper tools. I can load the car with every tool we have in the garage. All right, then. Let us go. Gramps with Betty. What makes you think Betty's in the cellar? She's out somewhere with Derek again. Everybody's supposed to take shelter. The monster from the cave, it's approaching the town. Huh? Then that's where they must have gone, those crazy kids. Joe, we've got to try and find them. You mean they... Come on then, let's go. Operator, this is an emergency. 
You must connect me with the city electrical generating plant. Hurry! Generating plant? Hello? Please listen to me. You must do as I say. The monster is coming towards the town. I'm at North Ridge Road. We have a weapon here that might be able to stop it if we can connect it to the power lines. Who is this? I'll have to check with... You have to believe me. There's no time to check with anybody. Out there. That looks like them. Derek is climbing down a pole. And look what's coming. We're not going to make it in time. Restore the power and it's ready. Hello? Turn the power back on. Okay. It is not enough. It is not enough power. Can you boost the power any? Please, it's not enough. I'll try to speed up the generators. Derek seems to have some kind of weapon, but it's not doing anything. Ah! If only there were more power, Betty. Is there any way to generate more power? We've got to have more. I can join in more circuits, but it may blow off the line. Try anything. It's our only chance. too late. You mean they're coming? Already? Your people are here for you. I must leave. They will take care of you. But Derek, you promised. You said... I know what I must do. You must not interfere. Betty, thank heaven you're all right. That book has indeed made you forget many things. We are the supreme race. We have the supreme weapons. Somehow I feel that I've always known you. That we've never been apart. You are the son of our leader. You won't be going back ever. Will you? How did he get a weapon like that? It makes me think of what the killer used. It is. The same thing. But who is he? Where did he come from, anyway? Some place none of us has ever heard of before, Joe. What do you mean? Clear from another planet. Far out in space. Hey, wait a minute. Betty, this is no time to be joking. I'm not joking. Where do you think the monster came from? And the man who was doing all the killing and, and the unheard of weapon he used? But how did they... They came in a, a spaceship of some sort. Whatever those people told you they saw last night. The flying saucer? And I thought those people were seeing things. They weren't. Derek looked into the sky just before he left here. Somehow... He could tell more on the way. He must be in the house. There's our car. Goodbye, Betty. No, Derek, no. You are Joe. I want you to take me somewhere in your vehicle. What makes you think I will? You refuse to take me? That's right. I'm staying right here. You will do as I say. Oh, no, Derek, this isn't you. 
Do not interfere, Betty, I beg you. Get in. Take me to where they are keeping the prisoner. The killer? He's at General Hospital, but... Then take me there. Betty! Trust me, Betty. Trust me. Derek seemed like such a nice fellow. Grandpa, he promised me something. He promised he would never leave. That he would never go back. I don't believe he wants to break his promise to me. I'm not going to let him. What can you do about it, honey? I think I know where he's going. Out by the old mine. I want to go there. I want to see him once more. He's hurt you enough, Betty. Grandpa, please let me go. I must. this building. It looks like they haven't transferred him to city jail yet. What are you planning to do? Never mind. Just get out of the car and walk in front of me. Do not move. I will take the prisoner. Get their guns. Hand them to me. Now get in. You face the wall. Keep your hands above your heads. I was stupid, Thor. Very stupid. But that is over. We are returning to meet the ships. Together. Why do you let them live? Kill them! There is no need. They will be dead soon enough. Along with everything else on this planet. Go! Look! That's what he meant! of an alien source are approaching from the sky. Radio contact has been attempted but cannot be established. Instructions are to prepare for an attack by an unknown enemy. Concern yourself with them. Destroy them. Why, Thor? They cannot change what is going to happen. What is going to happen, Derek? You must understand. Death must come to all. Sooner to some. Later to others. The guide ship is about to land. We must go to meet it. Your promise, Derek. Don't you remember your promise? I have not forgotten it. Call 
that's a guide ship. And it looks like there are a hundred more still in the sky. What are they going to do? Derek told me. The other ships are loaded with thousands of those horrible creatures, like the one Derek killed today. Why are they bringing them here? To raise for food, a safe distance from their own people. And they don't care what happens to us? Derry cared. He wanted to make the Earth his home. He promised he would never leave. Oh, Joe! I would have used the disintegrator on them, but it will not function without energy supply. It was damaged when you crashed. I had to bluff with it. It is just as well. They will be the first victims of the Gargan herds. So you were able to bring him back, Thor. He brought me. I am sorry I acted the way I did. I am ready to take my punishment. There will be no punishment, my son. You are my father? I am. I have watched your progress since you were born. You have excelled in all things. I was most disappointed to learn that you were deserted. I came this trip hoping I would find you had returned. Has what I have done not disqualified me? Am I still to... You are back. That is all that matters. Your mistakes were made because of that book. It blurred your mind, but only temporarily. How is it you are able to leave the planet? Will not the government structure collapse in your absence? We will return immediately, as soon as the Gargans are unloaded from the fleet of ships. The people are unaware that I am gone. Yes, we must leave quickly. If your absence were discovered, it would likely spark the beginning of a revolution. I am not the only one who had that book, Father. Yes, I know. And you will help in tracking down others who may have such books. Yes, I... I see the fleet is approaching. They are flying from radio signals from the guide ship, are they not? Let me be the one to direct them in for landing. Captain, are the ships close enough to receive the landing signals? Momentarily, but... Then go below, Derek. You will bring them in. went in first and closed the entranceway. Whatever's in the sky, they're getting mighty close. Derek has some plan. He's not doing what they want him to, I'm sure. Master control to fleet. Master control to fleet. Increase speed. Set flight pattern to Derek, minus point I zero eight. You. Increase speed. This. Open this hatch at once. The ships seem to be converging and increasing their speed. They cannot land. He has a plan to have them land, but crash! They're coming right at us! Derek's doing it! That's what he planned! But he's inside there! He'll be killed too! Get down inside the cave! Please think of what you are doing! Turn the ships around before it is too late! Hold, course, steady.
wow, teenagers used to be badass. They flew spaceships, they zapped people into bones, they figured out a cheap way to grow super jumbo portions of expensive lobster, and still had time to do their geometry homework and become the leaders of tomorrow today, in the 50s. Oh great, now I'm turning into a cartoon character again. Thanks a lot, hippies. Do me a favor. Just lay your faux suede vest out in the sun for a while to air out, take a shower, jam these scissors into your dirty dreads, somewhere between the love beads and the giant gross mat, and sneep, okay? Then get a blood transfusion, because I'm not doing this again. Because dealing with the general public wasn't annoying enough, now everyone's on government-sanctioned party drugs. Great. The handle on the toilet of your society has finally been pulled. At least you'll get a couple of swirls around the bowl before you're sucked into oblivion. And just think, the problem of driving high solves itself. Stone people can't find their keys. I did feel bad for the kids trick-or-treating this year, though. All those parents sparking reefers on the curb, inches away from princess costumes and the little Spider-Men. They look like they were working on one serious case of the munchies. And you thought your parents took a lot of your Halloween candy before they were reefer maniacs. For the rest of you not too high to understand me, seek me and you will find me. Through the wood, down the path, under the wall, between the bars. Over the ridge, down the steps, under the floor, and here we are! I hope you enjoyed the show, and keep watching because our next fleek is sure to be horrible. May all your nightmares be waiting at the foot of your bed when you awaken. Seriously, I'm working to make that happen. I've been the stranger. Good night. Derek the alien boy came from the stars with a ray gun toy. Don't you know Thor was annoyed? Cause all the living things he wanted destroyed. But Derek fell for the little earth girl. And precious little Betty became his whole world. And Derek just wanted to stay. But King Moody left the Guardian out to play. Now the Gargons are angry. It's a ray gun. Frenzy! Now the Gargons are angry! It's a ray gun! Frenzy! He's a Gargon Gunner now! Gee whiz, golly me, don't you know how? He's a Gargon Gunner now! Derek crashed the ships into the ground! Now the Gargons are angry! It's a teenage Frenzy! Now the Gargons are angry! It's a teenage friendly. Derek turned from Betty's sweet embrace The very last time he'd see Betty's sweet face He walked away a hero to save the human race They're the teenagers from outer space They're the teenagers from outer space They're the teenagers from outer space Reporter Joe Rogers is on the case. They're the gag and roll and ray gun show and fight to fold and skeleton and fresh that frozen strike and pose teens from out space. Yeah. They're the yard mowing, movie going, red with holding buttons, so and hydro blowing, hot to go teens from out space. Reporting 42 saturation degrees in 96 volumes. Intermediate fluctuation in Marfan content. Derek reporting. Tridex mixer components ratio exceeding 7 to 1.5.